Hey, hey, welcome to Digging Into the Bible. My name is Jim Barnard. This is a production of Tiller Coaching. All right, well, it's day 52, and we are absolutely crushing it. Speaking of crushing it, I absolutely crushed my time boundaries yesterday. Um, shoot, I really try to keep this at least under six minutes, uh, but there is so much I, I wanted to say and um, so much I honestly left out. So uh, I don't want to speak super fast like the Micro Machines guy. Remember that dude? Yeah, real fast. Um, so anyways, thanks for being patient. Maybe it's not that big of a deal between five or six or six and a half, whatever it ended up being. Um, but I want to keep this attainable every day, so I should not waste uh, any more time. Let's go ahead and dig into Matthew chapter 19, starting at verse 13. Then children were brought to him that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and went away. And behold, a man came up to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these I have kept, and what and do I still lack? <sighs> Jesus said to him, If you would if you would be perfect, go, sell what you possess, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. And when the young man heard this he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible. With, with God all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, See, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my namesake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. All right. Um, wow. Two minutes left. Let's go. So I really like that these two stories are back to back because they contrast so well. Um, I mean, let's start with the, the rich young man first. <laughs> he, um, he wants to know what he can do to earn God. He, he asked the question about what good deed he could do to gain eternal life. Um, basically, he wants to understand the rules and the responsibilities for getting into heaven. And wouldn't that be nice if we could just, like, map it out perfectly? Um, I mean, I guess of sorts you can, but, I mean, have you tried being perfect? It's really hard. It's, like, impossible? I think it's impossible. Maybe you found um, otherwise, but I think it's responsible. Notice that Jesus gives him six of the Ten Commandments, like, uh, the entire back section. Why the back section? Well, because the first four commandments are are really focused on honoring God and maybe not so much good deeds. Where um, like Jesus is truly saying here to this rich young man, like just be perfect, like go do it. And the guy's like, yeah, I think I've done it. And so Jesus is like, all right, go be a minimalist. Like we talked about that days and days ago. Go sell everything and um, you know give away your your wealth, just, you know, make that happen. And he's like, oh, sorry, guy, I, I can't do that. And uh, it, it's clear to me that uh, this guy really got tripped up on the second commandment about not having idols because, like, money and possessions were his idol. What I think is the most interesting about this is the verb come. Uh, I tried to give some context to, to come in the two stories where, you know, this guy came to him wanting knowledge and understanding um, and ultimately he just wanted to have control but the children they come to him in a different way they come to him to simply enjoy him like that's all they want to do and they do it so well um, 
they do it with innocence and pure enjoyment. Um, they aren't trying to find a narrative. The narrative that they find is just enjoying Jesus. Being with him is the narrative. Um, and, you know, the, the rich young man, in his lack of innocence, he just couldn't actually do that. Um, you know, children, they are free to enjoy being in God's presence. And truly anyone's presence. They just, they are so easily able to consume it. And uh, I don't know about you, but I, I, I want that back so badly. And I, 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 I seek to, to get that more and more every day. So um, I don't know. That's all I got for today. I, I, I made it under six minutes. So hey, good stuff. All right. I'll see you tomorrow as we start Matthew chapter 20. I'll see you then.